Quarkus chrysolopus, the California canyon oak. It's a multiple trunk tree. We have about nine trunks on this specimen. Our trunk circumference is over 20 feet in circumference. It's a giant old growth heritage tree and a California native. So we want to take the best possible care of it. We have a pretty large excision on this tree. The excision we're proposing, it's got to be at least 10 inches in diameter. We have a large lateral low limb in the tree that is dying back. And we have taken back some of the branch now and the last of the epicormics. We have had a little flash of epicormic shoots along the base of the limb, but the limb is really not viable in the long term. So we're going to excise it. We also notice that we have some fungus decomposing a structure in the limb about halfway out the limb at a dog leg, the site of an old break or an old cut of the past. Anyway, the fungus is well established in that structure, giving us more reason to consider its excision. It's never going to perform well again. It's never going to refoliate. It's low in the tree. It's in deep shadow. It's dying back. It has fungus on it. The last of our epicormics at the base are still there. So we feel this is probably about the right time to take this. We're not going to let this die all the way back to the main root crown trunk area. So we're going to take it all the way back to the root crown, to the main stem, and treat the end grain with our orange rind oil beeswax. We're going to track its progress. We don't take these big cuts lightly. This is a huge wound for the tree. It's a huge excision. And so we want to make the best possible cut so that the prognosis for the tree is the best possible outcome, the best possible longevity for the tree. The overall health of the tree is actually quite good. We have strong foliation all over the tree. The bark is in good condition. It's in a very full form, a natural form. By removing some of this material, we're going to take some burden off of the tree, ventilate the tree from excessive wind loads, and train the tree into its best natural form. We're primarily letting the tree tell us what it needs. From the tree's point of view, we see where the tree has withdrawn energy and those structures have died back. That's what we're going to remove from the tree. So we're taking all of our cues really from the tree's natural form and the tree's responses to site conditions. This is probably the smallest wound that we can make for this excision. To go back in deeper, we're going to have a larger surface area to our wound. So we're being conservative. Our branch collar is right around here, so we're just outside that collar. And since the wound is so large, we want to be very cautious with it. We have made a very large excision of declining wood on this Quarkus chrysolopus. We're going to track this wound and see how the tree performs. We have measured our excision at the largest width. It's about 11 inches in diameter. The wood is still firm and sound. We have not had decay enter in this stem, although we are showing some fungus about 10 feet out on the limb there. We do see some decay fungus. But we're going to track this tree and see how it does. We're going to be diligent on this wound and take good care of it. We have managed to heal up a wound on the opposite side of the tree of about equal size, and so we feel confident that this wound will heal. This is an example of a wound that has not healed well. And when injuries occur on trees and they're unable to cope with them, we can have decay sites with runaway cavity making and, and decomposition taking place. And we can see here there's an old cut was made here. There's an end grain cut. This is not a wind throw. This is an excision from the tree. And we had our remaining leader, which was over here, but this site, and associated with this cut, we see all this decay. Here's the fungus, here, taking the wood apart, right there. And we can see more advanced fungus on the other side of the limb. You can see how soft and pithy my saw goes right into this wood. Let's see, there we go. Let me give you a sense of that decay. That's a good three inches of soft, pithy material. So we believe possibly this decay is the result of this excision many, many, many years ago. Over 30 years ago, this cut was made. And you can see that runaway decay is taken over this limb. So it's okay to sacrifice this limb. I think we want to come back to our main root crown, our, our multiple trunk form. We're going to take good care of that wound and keep it treated. and eliminate this defect out of the tree. 
every excision from a tree is an injury. Every cut is a wound for the tree. And so those wounds must be reasonable. They must be within the tree's capacity to heal and cope with. Even though this wound is large, we're going to take good care of it and we're going to watch it close up.